Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit from above and open the floodgates of heaven and that your spirit might be here with us, searching us and guiding us home to your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day God has made. Amen. Amen. Oh, we have some wonderful special things uh, to uh, enjoy with each other in worship this morning. I know you just sit down, but stand up because we need to sing our opening hymn. <laughs> Guide me, oh, the great pilgrim through this land. I join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm going to invite you to head to your seat and have one. I'm going to share some ways that we can be connected together in the life of the church. Two quick things, our membership team sent out forms. When you get those, make sure that they come back by the deadline, and that's going to be the 24th of May. Also, uh, we are packing purses to send to 
uh, the women's shelter. And if um, those are due today, and if you can not get them to us today, make sure that you give them to Miss Ann. Miss Ann, there she is. I couldn't find you. I was looking for you. There you are. All right. That's who you want to get them to. A couple of other things. We have an Abundant Life luncheon on May 10th in the Fellowship Hall. That's good fried chicken. We bring sides and we feed you. And trust me, you will not be hungry afterwards. Mother's Day photo op in the prayer garden. Also today, we are recognizing some wonderful students. You and your families all have a cake and, and some refreshments out here in the prayer garden after service today. So you just go out the back door here and turn right in that pretty prayer garden, and we got some goodies for you, okay? So um, very excited. If you didn't know, it's graduation Sunday, and we're going we're gonna to praise the Lord for these kids. Um, all right. Also, Mother's Day, we're going to have a photo op. The Impact Team Meeting is on May 21st. Y'all, this, we did a lot of cool stuff. And that's going to be in the Fellowship Hall at 1215. Vacation Bible School Meeting on May 28th. We're about to gear up for that. If you don't know how we do it, it's for... Fridays in June, and it is amazing. So we want you to all know about those things. There's information in your bulletin about how you can learn uh, more about that. And with that being said, I'm too excited to celebrate you. I just got to get you up here. You guys come on up here, and, and let's celebrate. Wherever Miss Terry tells you to go, just line up. Somebody take pictures, lots of pictures. My wife's not here, so she usually does that for me. First of all, can we give them a hand? says, he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion. That's a great promise. Yeah, I'm glad Jesus is still working on me. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun.
Yes, you are a promise. Let's do this real quick. Let's pray. Everybody extend your hand for them, and we're going to ask God's blessing and give thanks for them. God, we thank you for these children. Thank you for their graduation. Lord, they're wonderfully made. Help them, Lord, to go out and be disciples in their next phase of school to all of those who attend school with them and let them be a blessing to their teachers and their teachers a blessing to them in Jesus' name, amen. Can we also say thanks to these two? Boy, they're pretty wonderful. Thank you, guys. That was incredible. We're so proud of y'all. I, you know what? I was also proud of myself. I knew all the words. I've heard y'all practice that so much. So <laughs> I'd like to invite those who are going to help us to receive this morning's offering. And uh, if y'all will go ahead and start preparing for that. And as we do, I want you to know that your gifts go to many different ministries here at Blackwater United Methodist Church. But there is none <laughs> that is more impactful in our community than that one. Uh, So this PDO, the Parents' Day Out program, is one of our great missions and impact of community. Um, And so I'd ask that you pray with me now as we uh, get ready to receive our offering. Father, we thank you for this day. Help us, God, to know who to pray for. Certainly, God, those who were affected in the terrible accident uh, involving our school children here in Central. I pray, Lord, for those who are recovering. We give you thanks, God, that that no one perish, but Lord, those are our kids. There's nothing more important. And I pray, God, that you would heal them because you do heal, Lord. I pray also, God, that you would receive this offering, Lord, and that it would be pleasing to you, God. That we would use the gifts that we receive, Lord, to do ministry, but God, that you would multiply it in the supernatural way that only you can. I pray, God, that we would be willing to talk about how active you are in our lives and what it is is that you're doing that's good in us. In Jesus' name, amen. And while you're receiving the offering, i got a little video for you. Check this out. Um, a fighter fight. A chicken. I want to be everything. Uh, a police officer. Fireman. Please. Um, I want to be a teacher. I want to be a mommy. I want to be a robot. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a boxer. Um, I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. Oh, my mommy's boss. I want to be a mommy. I want to be a toy hunter. Letters. Numbers. To know my numbers and learn. I learned about like two things. I paint a lot and I draw ABC. Be quiet and be still. Letters. Following in the lines. We learned about kids. A H room. I learned how to read. Soccer. Coloring. 
put my shoes on? I don't have to eat for them. Right. I can tie jackets around waists. Open my daddy. I'm good at washing the dishes. Helping my daddy build. Doing gymnastics. Doing handstand. I'm good at reading. Watching TV. I'll make it no kicking and turning toys. I would not let my kids throw toys. I want to eat it. Me either. I'll make a rule to eat hot chicken every day. My rule would be not running down the hall. Taking my fresh shoes at nap time. Taking your shoes off. Taking your shoes off at nap time and at uh, recess. No pushing your friends. Listen to me. No talking. No shoes allowed. No playing at the table. No ripping your paper. No, no um, cutting your hair, and no <laughs> cutting your ears. Let everybody watch TV. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. As you can tell, we're not allowed to take our shoes off at nap time. <laughs> they don't like that either. I wanted to say thank you to um, Ian for the beautiful video. He and Aaron worked really hard to get some of those answers. Um, but thank y'all very much. And I also want to thank you parents that came out this morning to bring your babies. 
Um, if you were here with us for Muffins for Moms, you heard me say, I'm struggling this year. I'm having a hard time letting my babies go. The world we're sending them into is not a great world anymore. I will continue to pay, pray for your babies daily. I love you and each of them very, very much. And I'm going to miss y'all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just come to you this morning with this church full of people that love you and love each other. Help us to be people that love each other the way that you do. Unconditional, accept us all. Be with these children and their parents as they go to the next chapter of their lives. If they have to send their babies off to kindergarten, protect them and keep them safe. I thank you for everyone at this church, Lord. You showed your grace and your love here Friday night when we were all together just to enjoy each other's company. It was such a wonderful time. I lift each and every one of these children up to you. I ask you to wrap your arms around them and bless them as they go to the next chapter. Now will you say the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we give those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
morning, everybody. I'll be reading scripture this morning. It's Exodus 2, verses 11 through 25. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting, and he said to the one who was in the wrong, why do you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you kill the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. When the Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. So Moses fled from the Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, An Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to share a meal. Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son and named him hmm, Jersum. And he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Their cry for help rose up to God from their slavery. God hearing their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. This is the word of God for the people of God. That was Gersom. You were right. You did great. Nothing like a last minute stand in and then you get names. <laughs> Hebrew names at that. You know, there was a time in my life when I was about 18. I'd finished high school, wasn't really ready or financially able to go to college yet. And... Um, I moved to San Antonio. I moved from Fort Worth, where I lived, to San Antonio. And uh, my sister lived down there with her husband and their two children, young, young children. And I went there uh, to work in their real estate company. And um, I had never done real estate before, so I, I got my real estate license. I did that in about six classes and a, and a couple of tests. And... Um, the reason why I did that is because at that point in my life, I'd worked a lot of like restaurant jobs and things like that, but nothing that was really going anywhere for me. Um, and so I went there to get a fresh start. I went there because I felt in my, in my soul, in my being, I just knew within my heart that the life that I was living was just kind of monotonous and it wasn't really like something I was passionate about. And so I went there to just get something new going on in my life. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this story. God, you are the God who creates all things new and gives us new beginnings. You give us new mercies. You give us new forgiveness. You give us new portions of your grace. And God, even, even when we aren't great at stewarding that, Lord, there's even more behind it, where that came from. God, you're a generous God, and I pray, Lord, that that would resonate deeply in our hearts today as we unpack your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So my experience at that time of church it's not a great one. Um, my church was a very rigid church. 
like no makeup, no collars, no, I mean, no hair beyond your collar. I mean, like lots of rules at my church when I was growing up. And so it wasn't that great. And I just wonder how many of you resonate with need in your own life at some point for a fresh start. Anybody ever need a fresh start? Oh, thank you. Yes. For those of you who've never needed a fresh start, good for you. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. That's great for you. This sermon's probably not for you, but for the rest of you, you're going to love it. Um, Sometimes being raised in the church, um, it can lead to resentment, and here's why. Because people in the church fail to meet our expectations, right? Church people may also expect too much from us uh, if we're not church people, leaving us feel like we're judged or like we're lesser than. Or church people who are not merciful or compassionate to us can sometimes be off-putting, and I get it. So if you're here and you've ever had that experience of church, listen, I get it, I understand. But when it comes to making decisions for ourselves, we often choose to assume identities that we elevate as better and sometimes identifying with people who make us a little nervous. And church people, we can do that. We can absolutely do that for people. I get it. At that point in my late teens, I could start making decisions for myself. And so what I decided was, hey, I'm kind of done with the church. I'm done with the church. And now I've come to understand that there's a whole bunch from my generation and the generation's who are younger than mine, who are classified as these duns. We're done. Done with the church. These folks have had negative church experiences, and so they're done with it. They've made a conscious decision to leave church out of their family life. And that breaks my heart. And really, church, it should yours too. It really should. It should be your constant prayer that we uh, get another opportunity to reach those who are done and show them that the church has changed. But I'm not going to let you other folks off the hook, the duns, people like I was. Because sometimes you just need to give people another chance, a new beginning. Now in our passage today, before Moses was anybody... His parents, because of their faith and their worldview on justice, defied the Pharaoh of Egypt who had issued a death decree over the land. Now Moses' mother, his real mother, technically obeyed that decree. That decree was to put all the sons in the Nile River. Well, she did that only she put a little spin on it because she put him in a waterproof basket first and then put him in the river. So technically, she did what Pharaoh said. She just put a little twist on it. Now, I believe that this is what Jesus meant later on when he lived and said that we should be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. (laughs) This is a great example of that. There in the waterproof basket, the innocent baby's well-being and future was put into the hands of God. She put him in the waterproof basket in the Nile River and put him in God's hands. Now I want to push pause on that because we've heard a story that is almost similar to this, just maybe on a little bit more of an epic and big scale. Involving an innocent or involving the innocent (laughs) being protected in a waterproof vessel and whose well-being and future was placed in God's hand. You know what this story sounds a lot like? To me, it sounds a lot like Noah. Remember Noah and his family on the ark? Delivered during one of the darkest and deadliest times. This is sort of a history repeating itself here. Okay? Noah was big and epic. This is brought down into family life and how this plays out smaller. The reason that that was important is because God was clearly setting the stage for what God did in Noah's time. A big deliverance. That's what God is setting up here in this story of Moses. 
If you read this whole story, you learn that God even orchestrated Moses' real mother to not only raise him in Pharaoh's home as Pharaoh's child, you also find out that God put Moses' real mother there and got her paid to raise. Now, I wish somebody would pay me to raise my kids. (laughs) Only God could do something that amazing. So Moses grew up with the influence of his mother as an heir to the throne in Egypt. It's amazing. And he came to this important crossroad, a decision time, right? It was decision time. And he had to make an important choice. Either he was going to identify with these lesser Israelites who were being enslaved and mistreated and do that with God's justice or with the power and the prestige and the opportunity that his adoption into this Egyptian family and and into Pharaoh's house where he could have it all. He had to decide. Moses' decision was made clearly in the heat of a moment of personal anger and rage as he watched an Egyptian mercilessly beat a Hebrew and Moses killed him. Moses' heart filled with sympathy and compassion and with righteous anger would not stand by and watch These people take beatings. And in that instant, Moses became the instrument of deliverance for God's chosen people. And he took his place in a line of water deliveries that would run through the ages. We talked about two of them. There was Noah and his family on an ark in a great flood. Now there's Moses and the Israelites parting the Red Sea crossing. And there would soon be another, Jesus and the church, through the waters of baptism. All water deliverance stories, every one of them. Promises made, promises kept, deliverance, a fresh start, new beginnings. Begin again. There is another similarity to Moses and Jesus. Uh, Like Jesus, Moses steps off of his throne and into a place of humility, becomes himself a slave by identifying with the Israelites in Pharaoh's Egypt to deliver God's people. So Christ stepped off his throne in heaven and into the humility of Herod's death decree against the firstborn sons in Bethlehem to deliver sinners from death. Both men were rejected by their own people. Moses, here in this story, by two arguing Hebrews asking Moses, who made you ruler and judge over us? Jesus, by the people of his hometown in Nazareth, and the religious leaders asking the same questions. (laughs) Both men favored by God at birth, miraculously preserved. Both men mighty in deeds, works, and miracles. Both men offering deliverance. To others. Now, the first thing I want you to consider in this passage about how it relates to you, because really, who cares, right? How does this relate to you? Well, put yourself in Moses' shoes, his running shoes, to be exact. Have you ever wanted to just run <laughs> in your life? You ever just wanted to run away? You ever want to just run for your life? Or feel like you're running for your life? How does running for your life leave you feeling? How does running for your life leave you feeling about God? Maybe for some of you, you feel left behind. For others, maybe you feel like God's left you behind. But is it possible? Let me ask you, because this is important. Is it possible Did God kept up with you the whole time you've been running? (laughs) Hmm? Or what about this? Now, this is a... What if God ran ahead of you? Hmm. You ever considered that? Maybe God's run ahead of you. What if wherever you ran is exactly where God ran and was waiting for you? (laughs) I bet God's a faster runner than any of us. Let me give you one more fact across these stories of the faithful. How long did it take for the rain to come and go in the story of Noah and his family? 
40 days and 40 nights, right? How old was Moses at the time God used him to deliver the Israelite slaves from Egypt? 40. How long was Moses up on Mount Sinai while God was giving him the Ten Commandments? 40 days. How long did the Israelites wander in the desert for making an idol? 40 years. How long was Jesus tempted as he fasted in the wilderness? 40 days. The number 40 is clear. It represents the time of testing and trials in our life. Do you think that God was ahead of these events each and every time? Yes, God was. Do you believe that God is ahead of you in your own struggles? Yes, you can believe it. See, it's right here in the Word. Now, it's time to see that God has been waiting on you. Always has been. And is now extending each and every one of you an offer. Begin again. If you've been blessed to be raised by parents who believe in God, good for you. Whether that felt good or not, it was a blessing to at least know God. Many of you are duns. Other of you are nuns. <laughs> Means you've not had any church. And for the duns, here I will, here's what I want to say to you. The church is an imperfect place. We are imperfect people. We have people here who are as messed up, wrong, ugly, judgmental, and as hypocritical as they come. That's just the truth, me included. That may not be your biggest challenge. Your biggest challenge may be that you're expecting perfection from imperfect people. Ah, hmm? That lesson was a hard word for me personally. Almost cost me my faith. Now let us free you from any need to put on pretense and airs while you're here. We aren't any different than you are. We're just like you. <laughs> so hear that. For the nuns, here is what I want to say to you. We're not a cult. We are not trying to brainwash you. We are not trying to get you to drink the Kool-Aid. Although we had some outstanding macaritas on Friday. Just wanted to add that. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> watermelon lemonade was good too. We stand in life with each other though. We make friendships that last a lifetime and we celebrate one another, pray for one another, love and worship God with each other, and we care for each other, including both here in life and in death. We care for each other. And that is what we believe here. To the congregation of Blackwater, here's what I want to say to you. When we recite our baptismal and membership vows, we take on one name. That name is Christian. Christian. I am Kenan Christian. My wife is Rachel Christian. You are Lindy Christian and Terry Christian and Dwayne Christian. And all of you who have accepted the Lord, your name is Christian. We are inherent in our new family name, Christian, is the name of our Savior, Christ. Christian. Christ Ian. <laughs> Christ is in that name. And Christ is enough, and Christian is enough. Anything else that we put before that can be a slippery slope. Ask Moses and the Israelites if they know about idolatry. They sure do. So be careful about whatever you word you add before Christian. Beware of the blank before the word Christian. We like to talk about conservative Christians and progressive Christians and Western Christians and evangelical Christians and charismatic Christians and all these other kinds of Christians. When you do that, you start thinking and talking about stuff about you and not stuff about Christ. Christ is enough. Okay? That's what I want my church to know. Pay close attention about adding unnecessary words because idolatry was this bunch's biggest problem. It really was. Today we're being offered to begin again, a fresh start. Who will join me in that? 
Who will join me in accepting the Lord's offer for a fresh start? Maybe it's time for a do-over in our lives. Maybe it's decision time for you, like it was for Moses. Time to decide how you're going to spend your life or whether or not you're going to teach your kids about faith. Maybe it's time. I believe God brought you to this point right here and right now to get you off of the fence and into this family where you belong. We're not perfect. But we can throw an amazing Cinco de Mayo party. And we love each other when we're in the hospital. And we cook each other food and take each other's meals. And we sing to the Lord together. And we forgive each other when we're messed up. Because we are. So don't have expectations of perfect people. Have expectations of loving people. Let me ask you. Why did God give so much attention to these Israelites? Did the word of God say that God gave them so much attention because they were perfect and because Israel was so great? Mm -mm. God gave God's attention to them because God had made them a promise, a promise that they would be God's children. And that promise was made and kept. And thank God, because of that relationship today, we get to begin again. We get to have a fresh start right here at the communion table this morning. A fresh start. The same fresh start that Jesus offered his disciples when he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Let's begin again. The same fresh off offering and fresh beginning that he gave them when he said, this is my blood. The blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. See, that's affirmation. That was a God thing. <laughs> Dear God, pour your Holy Spirit out on these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ, one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'd like to invite those who are going to come and help serve communion to come forward and get those elements ready. And as they do, I want to say this to you. If you're not from around here or it's your first time visiting or if you're a regular visitor or no matter who you are or what your background is, whatever the blank is before the word Christian, I want you to hear, this is not Blackwater's table. It's not the table of the United Methodist Church. It is the Lord's Supper. <laughs> so it's the Lord's table. Therefore, all are welcome. If you would, come forward, extend your hands to receive a gift. We'll put bread in that hand. And then you'll receive a juice, and you'll take both of those elements at the same time. And remember that God is a God of deliverance, offering you the chance this morning to begin again. The God who was, is, and is to come.
people of Christ, receive this benediction. Go with peace. May peace go with you. Thank you all for so much for coming. We really appreciate it. should be there in time to play the piano. just wanted to remind everybody that we are going to have refreshments for all the kids and uh, we have some cupcakes and, and uh, little gifts for them as well. Thank you all for coming.